G'day guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to this is Bayside HQ. This isn't my new setup at home. Unfortunately, I wish it was. This is Bayside HQ and this is one of the commercial offerings um, and I guess the showroom that we use here at Bayside. This is one of the showrooms. So this is the commercial showroom. Downstairs, we also have a showroom that has the enclosure and we also have a net coming as well. Um, but today, that's not what this video is about. This video is about the Pro TVX and the updates that have just come to this unit because these are I'm going to say the biggest update, or this is the biggest update we've had from the Pro TVX since launch. This is huge. So for a while now, uh, in all my videos, I've been quite vocal um, and quite critical of the fact that the Pro TVX didn't dimple track. And that was really the only thing with this unit. It's the only area with this unit that I really thought that it could improve. Yes. It uses AI for the club data and sometimes it's not perfect. Most of the time it is. Um, the only real issue with this unit or the big thing that it didn't do that things like, you know, the Unicor IXO do, things like the Foresight Falcon do, was dimple track. That was the one thing with this unit that um, kind of let it down. And what I really thought with this unit is I thought that it would take additional hardware or I thought it would be you know, the Pro TX version two, um, you know, whenever they were gonna release it, if they are gonna release it, I thought it was gonna take a new version of this unit to, to give dimple tracking. I didn't think they'd be able to do it with this hardware that they have. And I don't know why, I just, for some reason, I thought this unit was always gonna need a logo to actually track spin and spin axis. With this new update though, the big news is this launch monitor now dimple tracks, which is massive. I know a lot of people, when they talked about the Pro TVX, not dimple tracking was a big thing because if you use, for instance, uh, you know, Tideless Pro V1 golf balls or you use whatever golf ball you wanna use that doesn't have the picks pattern, a lot of people were saying that normal golf balls didn't track well for spin and spin axis with this unit, where I've done a lot of testing in my environment and I found that using a normal golf ball was incredibly similar, if not identical to using a tailor-made Pix ball. The reason I used Pix balls was because I was using the TP5X anyway. And so for me, having that extra assurance of, you know, knowing the unit's gonna lock onto something on the golf ball, that's why I did it. Um, and that's why a lot of people did it. But now you don't have to worry about that because with this update, it is in beta, but this unit is now dimple tracking. Let's talk about some of the other features that's come in this update. So along with dimple tracking, um, we do have major improvements with spin detection as well. They've added a rifle spin data block, which I've got to try and find on the lab software because I couldn't see it, but um, they've added a rifle spin data block. They've added an AI marker in the spin data block for when spin AI is used. So pre-dimple tracking, and even when it's dimple tracking, if this unit missed spin and spin axis, it would implement something called spin AI. And I did a video on this. And what it essentially does is the unit will take all of the measured data, all of the measured club data, and it would estimate or it would calculate what spin and spin axis would be um, using all of the measured data. So, and again, I was very vocal saying, you need to let us know when you're using this spin AI. And they've done that. So they've added a marker, a visualization on there to let you know if spin AI has been used rather than the unit capturing the spin and spin axis, which is fantastic. They've added a warning over the spin visualizers for when there's too much interference from IR light from other devices. So um, I do a lot of head-to-head -head testing. And as I've talked about, spin and spin axis can really be affected by um, interference from other launch monitors. And so they've added a warning now to come up if there is too much IR light detected. Each unit is gonna have a certain amount of uh, infrared light that it puts out. And if there's too much or if there's too little, then that's where all of the readings can get affected. So it's good that they've let us know. Um, so if I do test this thing against a GC3, it'll let us know, hey, there's too much IR light, there's gonna be a potential for interference. I know a lot of people as well use um, monochromatic color cameras as opposed to color cameras for their swing videos and they use like IR floodlights essentially. So if you're one of those users that does that, you're gonna get a warning saying there's too much IR light, which is fantastic. They've improved the creation speed of the swing videos. So 
I never really thought the creation speed was that slow, to be honest, but um, whenever I hit a shot and I looked up the swing videos there, but apparently that they've improved the speed of that. They've also fixed an issue where a new swing video would be created on a non-valid launch. So with this unit, if you've got a ball in your hitting area, for instance, um, and you've got a club, and say you've got a ball in your hitting area, and you want to like knock it out of your hitting area and you just tap it out, sometimes the unit would register that as a shot and it would give you a video of your club hitting that shot out. Or for instance, if you've got a ball on the mat and you shouldn't and you go to kick it off, it would give you a video of that ball being kicked by your shoe, which I always found quite funny and I actually like that it did the video. Apparently they've taken that away now, so you're not gonna get that video on non-valid launches. And then also they've done small bug fixes, so whatever that includes. But the main story here is we are now dimple tracking with this unit. Let's hit some shots and let's see how this dimple tracking goes. I will be doing a lot more in-depth videos with this. Um, if people want, I can compare it to a GC3, I can compare it to a Spiker 3. Now that I've got this environment, we can do some videos. Like I'm happy to do some in-depth testing videos um, with this unit. So let's start off with a wedge, um, just a sand wedge, and I'll just hit some uh, chip shots essentially, just 100 yard shots, and I'll move this flag, and we'll just see exactly what it looks like. Now, spoiler alert, I have looked at this, and the spin validator and everything that you see in labs, and when I hit a shot, I'll show you labs, it looks the exact same. Like it really doesn't look like there's any difference. So I'll, um, I'll hit a shot and you'll see what I mean. So a little hundred yard shot, that was a nice shot. Get up, get up. Um, so yeah, nice shot. Let's have a look at the spin uh, block though, the spin validator. It looks the exact same. And what I mean by that is whenever I used to hit balls um, and I used to, Look at the spin validator. I used to see those markings on the golf ball and they always looked like that. Like they never looked like they were locking onto a logo or anything. And I always thought, is this thing dimple tracking or is this spin validator not working? I honestly think Pro-T has been working on this in the background. I really think they've been working on this in the background. Um, and then they've just announced it with this update. Because to me, I'm looking at that and I'm going, that, obviously hasn't locked onto a logo because none of those colored dots are on a logo. When it used to lock onto the ball, maybe one of the dots was on the logo, but a lot of them were just around the golf ball like that. So I don't know. Have they been working on this for a long time and just not telling us? Now, looking at the rest of that data, look at club face. It's saying 10 closed. That's severely closed. Um, yeah, I mean, that does look closed, doesn't it? All right, let's hit a shot. The, but I mean, in terms of the spin and spin axis, that looks correct. 10,000 spin, baby draw, that's what it felt like. Yeah, not a bad shot. Rip back, oh, just off the back. Um, yeah, I mean, looking at spin, al almost 10,000, around 9.9. Nine. Um, yeah, that looks, it looks really good for, for spin and spin axis. Looking at the validator again, you can see it's not locking onto any logos on the ball. All of those dots are not on any of the black logos on the golf ball. So that is, that's really cool. Again, 10,000 spin, baby draw, rip back, lovely. Yeah, I mean, it all looks good, doesn't it? And again, okay, that one there, the blue dot is on a, on a logo, but whether it's picked up on the logo or whether it is actually purely dimple tracking now, that would be the thing is, is it purely dimple tracking or is it using the logos and if it doesn't see a logo, it'll dimple track or, I don't know. There's so many questions I have for Pro T that I'm gonna be asking at the PGA show. Uh, that wasn't a great strike, but the data all looks good. What I should say is this is in beta and I've got to like really um, emphasize that because if we see any misreads, if we see any weird shots, it's in beta. So report those through. 
And that's why, you know, Pro-T does this. They release these and all launch monitors release beta so people can test and find errors. Yeah, a little bit of a fade. I don't know about that. That to me, I mean, maybe it was. I was toe down, was I? No, I was pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was a fade to me. It almost felt like my little baby draw. I don't know. All of the club data is telling me that should have been a baby draw. Yeah, that's the shot there. Get up. 11,000 spin, that one ripped. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't look any different, does it? It looks like Pro-T Labs. Nothing's changed visually with the actual, um, you know, spin validator. It looks the exact same. That's what it's always looked like. Um, let's hit a few eight irons and um, yeah, we'll see how the eight irons go. I did just try and film this video and uh, my main screen didn't record. So I'm filming this for the second time. Oh, not the best strike. Almost a dead straight shot. Spin rates, total spin looks good. This tour response golf ball I've never used. Um, I don't know, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it as much as the TP5X. Oh, a little bit of a fade. It definitely spins more than the TP5X. Um, so that one there was a little fade, but I was into out with a closed club face. So I think to me, should that have been a draw? It's, um, I was toe down. Potentially that should have been a baby draw, but I can't see any of those dots like moving. So it looks like they have locked onto, you know, the dimples or whatever they're locking onto. So it's always hard to say. That was a nice strike. More of those, please. Beautiful strike. Yeah, I mean, that looks good. Slightly into out, cl uh, closed face to path, baby draw, good spin numbers, good ball speed numbers. Yeah, that looks spot on. Yeah, really nice strike again. Yeah, and again, baby draw, good spin numbers. This ball definitely spins more than a TP5X, confirmed. But I mean, all of that information looks really good. And if we look at the spin validator, it looks like it's locked onto maybe the logo, but it's, I thought, I really thought the Pro-T Lab software would look different. I don't know why, but I thought the spin validator would just look different. It looks the exact same. It just looks the exact same. Right, let's finish with a few drivers. Yep. Not a bad shot. Spin numbers look good. Yeah, I mean, it, it went pretty much dead straight. I was into out, but my face must have been a little bit open and it went dead straight. Looking at the actual spin validator, I mean, it looks like it's locked on to potentially that logo, but there's a lot of dots just on the actual white golf ball. So it's so hard to say. Um, that all looks good though. This golf ball, this is not as quick as a TP5X. I can guarantee that. It's nowhere near as quick as a TP5X. I'll try and place this to where there's no logo showing. That should be, Actually, let's rotate it this way. Now, I, I'll, this shouldn't, I've kind of done this the worst possible case, so I don't think it'll see a logo. Okay, we've definitely seen a misread there. So I'll report that through to the guys. So 100% that was a misread, total spins wrong. Yeah, see, look at that. We've got no um, logo there for it to lock onto. So that was worst case. I'm gonna do another one of those. That was interesting, but I'm definitely gonna report that through to Pro-T. Okay, that was actually really interesting. Let's do another driver like that. 
and we'll try and hide the uh, logo from view. And like I said, this is in beta, right? So like, this is, and I'm doing this absolute worst case, um, this is in beta. And so this is the point of beta testing to try and provide the feedback to the guys. Oh, that was a bad strike. But that seems legit. Like that's a correct shot shape for how I swung that. So it definitely got that one. So we did see that misread. It's definitely got that one. That was exactly how it felt. We'll go again. Again, I'll try and worst case the logo there. It's exactly how it felt again. Oh, high toe, just horrendous. That was just not good. I'll try and put a decent swing on it, bear with me. This is what happens when you have three weeks off golf and then you try and film a video where you're hitting drivers. Yep. So that's legit, absolutely. That was hit nice. So yeah, I don't know. We've definitely seen the one misread. Um, the rest of them seemed really good and they seemed legit, um, exactly how they felt. But that one shot, 1000% was a misread. Okay, so that is gonna be it for this video. The Pro TVX, the big news is now, this unit is dimple tracking. Is it perfect? No, um, this is in beta. You saw the one shot I hit with driver. It went, you know, dome off to the right with zero spin. That was definitely not how that shot was struck. So we did see confirmed one misread, but this is in beta. There's gonna be misreads and that's why we beta test so we can feed the information back to Prote and they can make this product better. You've got to ask yourself though, with this unit now dimple tracking, it is, incredibly compelling and it's amazing to see pro t continue to update this unit to make this unit better instead of bringing out new hardware just refining the product they have over the years and all subscription free i mean you've got to ask yourself is there another unit is there another overhead that is going to be better for the home user than the pro t vx i know for me i love the pro t i always have um, ever since i used it it was my first overhead and honestly, this, this unit just keeps getting better and better. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did let me know, any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.